Who's got the better draft, in your opinion? Draft wise, it's hard to say. I do. I will lean towards now a little bit. I think the, um, this can be a little bit of a tricky oh, game for Saika as it goes on. I'm very curious to see how much the Ursa can get out of lane. Feels like that's the most pivotal part here. And we do finally get voice lines that was, you know, very missing in the last time. I'm not sure if it was nerves for like Talon or if Thunder were all serious mode. You know, first series of the day, they just you know, kind of wake up mode for our esports players. We've got the voice lines all warmed up here, which is good to see. It was it's very quiet, Mike. Still, uh, outside of the draft, historically, this matchup has been uh, pretty lopsided as well. In the past year, these two teams have faced off against each other twice. And one ended up in a draw in Dasha Dubai, and the other one was a 2-0 in favor of BB Team. So uh, that was a very recent one as well, maybe a month back at most. So BBT has had a good figure into what Nouns likes to do. Maybe they can... Because of that, maybe they understand how to ruin Gunner's lane with Psyka's Ursa and just run down early on. Is that how we're pronouncing it, John? Psyka? I that know. is Nightfall, by the way, in case anyone wasn't listening to the panel. Psyka? Psyka? Is, is that how we pronounce it? Is there a joke there? I'm not, Miero? He's got a couple of fair bit of damage here on this way out. It looks like they'll go for the boar instead. They don't care about the actual hero. It's fine. It'll be a, a three for one trade on the bounty runes in favor of BBT. So already a, a decent start here for the Radiant end of things. and. Well, of course, we do always like to start with the mid lane, John, but you do have a very boring mid lane here between the DK and the Queen of Pain. How do you feel about this one? Now, it's standing mid lane matchup, something that we haven't seen in a while. Never changes, no matter how many things in the game changes, right? Like, you've got facets now, you know, you've got some interesting interactions. This matchup, as long as it's DK, it's almost always just kind of the same. Copy is going to be able to just farm up, try to clear out with Scream of Pain. GPK is always going to be able to hold back with Breed Fire. Copy's not going to be able to fully shove out GPK either. I'm really curious what Copy does go for the build. Uh, whether or not he just kind of skips out in Shadow Strike or goes more Shadow Strike and spamming it on GPK to make it comfy, kind of open. I've seen a few pop players go either or in what they prioritize here. A rune control is a bigger part for Copy for sure. And uh, GPK is going to be free to just completely ignore it if he wants. Uh, denial from the sports is going to be pretty big. And they do have really strong support rotations to kind of complement that for GPK as well. So you can take a look at those other lanes. Over up top, you've got Miero and Save up against Yuma and Fly. And this one's a little bit interesting because you do have a lot of long range poke coming out from save he did go for full bore they nerfed the hell out of the little shredder so you're you're not gonna be seeing anyone going for ricochet 2 nowadays but the reach is gonna be massive you've got some good connections with the board down the line and you know you've got the hawk that can kind of chain control as well so there's a lot of burst potential up top from bbt and for Yuma, it's going to be a bit of a slow ride into that level 3, maybe even level 4 is when you start to be comfy. And before that point, Miero and, uh, Miero and Save are just going to have a fun time up top for sure. And of course, bottom lane, Jonathan, you do have uh, Saksa, or excuse me, rather Saika, and uh, Toronto Tokyo. Yo, oh, hold on a minute. Jump is there. Lelis. I mean, they're going to try here for the Tinker. Gunner's going to jump in and intervene as well. Saika, still going. Lelis should be dead here. Finally gets the march off. Somehow is still alive, but will finally die. Toronto Tokyo able to secure first blood as Saika did not want to risk his own life for that. But they have left him on quite low HP in fairness, but it looks like he'll have a shared tango provided to him by Toronto. Yeah, it shouldn't be too rough to kind of just recover. You are seeing just some of the nuisances that can come out down bot here for Saika. The mischance from laser is going to be annoying, although it's not so spammable in lane anymore. There's a lot of AOE control, a lot of ways to try to kite around the Ursa. You have to be a little bit cautious when they do try to play aggressive, but that burst damage is always there. You get a couple of right clicks off, Psyka can just run you down no matter what, as long as Gunner isn't able to play off the threat of a Stinger turnaround. As long as it's away from the creeps, you should be relatively happy, and that's why that action takes place by the small camp. You're not going to make that same move right next to your creep wave for sure. Gunner does have counterplay once he does have that Stinger up. So until that point, uh, you're, you're, you're not going to be too concerned about sticking around, but it's, it's going to be a little bit rough, right? Like... Tinker is going to be able to shove out, like the panel said, there's a lot of AOE effects that try to just hold her ground, heal off, get some damage going. But in the lane, you know, Saika, as long as he isolates away the Tinker, it's going to be easy food here. 
remember when uh, when Tinker got changed and uh, they brought March of the Machines back and everyone yep. was convinced that I was wrong about this being the most busted hero yep, in the game? I again? remember. I remember. You I remember, don't you, John? I, I they were calling me stupid. They said yep. I had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah. Now look at him, Jonathan. Look at him. Yeah. Look at this stupid hero. And the sad thing was, this was even worse when we were seeing Yoa play at mid. <laughs> that was the wor that's the worst part. It had like one moment in the qualifiers, and then it just got completely yeah. deleted. I saw like Wickrim tweet about Tinker. The next thing I know, the next patch just deletes mid Tinker. So it, it yeah. was crazy. At the last of all, now we have it on support. Are you happy about that, Mike? No, no you don't no, have to deal with mid Tinker. I never... Now it's support. I never even said it was going to be mid Tinker. I just said Tinker was bad. And everyone just assumed I was being, I was wrong. I wasn't, Jonathan. I was right for once. I feel very proud of that. Very good, Mike. Throw a up broken, up. a broken clock is correct twice a day. Thank you, John. I'll take it. Fly. Taking a bit of damage on, the, on his way out here. Saved his trading. Been a pretty quiet game so far. One to oh four minutes in. Both sides more than happy to farm. It's like the, the bottom lane going pretty even between Saika and, and Gunner. Both CS just very, very even between the two. Could make the same argument up a top lane, but Miero is really starting to dominate though on this Beastmaster. I suppose it's very hard though against Beast, even in this meta. Even for the CK. Just not a very easy time. No, certainly not. I did like the ideas coming out there from Jenkins. I, I wish we got the other facet with the dive bombing Hawks, the attack speed, uh, the Dominator. It's just going to be the standard Ags. This is what I've been seeing in a few of the third party turns as well. Uh, this is, it, it's still pretty much old Beastmaster. Occasionally you would get Dominator, but they would always still stick on beast mode anyhow. So I don't think the facet, at least in what I've watched in pro games, it hasn't switched over yet. And you do have a smooth ride here into your Ags from Yarrow so far. Already has the arcs up to keep that Axis spam going. Although, save. On the end, I mean, they want flying. They've just got so much damage between these two. Cookie will land as well, so Miero having the time of his life right now as Fly still trying to run, but save right on his tail. And Miero does secure the kill anyway with the Axis as now Yuma also being chased down. They do have a scatter blast available. They just want some vision and they'll find it. Miero is still on the chase and it looks like it's going to be another kill here for the Beastmaster. Hell, even Gunner going down, down the bottom lane while all this was happening. Everything working out for BBT. And uh, that was now and kind of trying to initiate onto save as well. Not quite panning out, not respecting that reach and turnaround potential from Miero with Wild Axis. Down bot, Gunner's death was once again away from Creep Wave. He keeps getting dragged away from where he could try to play with Stinger. In fact, he doesn't even have Stinger. He's gone Burrow Strike, Sandstorm. Oh, so boy, he's looking for more initiation. Oh. Still? That, it's just so much damage coming out from Psycho already. Like, Gunner just got back to the lane, lost three quarters of his HP, and now he just has to go back to his T1 tower. Like, it's just a very rough affair at this stage for the, the offlane Sanking. There's mid lane, Lelis being hunted down by Toronto with the Scattered Blast to slow him up. There's not really much of a way of getting out of this, so Lelis will go down. They can apply a bit of pressure. They've still got the Siege Creep alive here in this mid T1 tower, and with the Enchanted Creep, they'll just tank through this T1. Nice and easy. Six and a half minutes in, it's already gone. Ah, that's the power of the Corrosive Dragon. We haven't seen it in a while. We've been seeing a lot more red today, of course. In the last series, it was all red dragon. But Corrosive does have that push potential. GPK with the amp damage doesn't take too long to clear that out. Seeing now and trying to contest BBT's Wisdom Rune, but not going to go all in there with a scan coming true. And for now, it's, I mean, a 5 0 start is rough. You're 4k behind, 7 minutes in. Yeah, um, you lost your mid-tier one. This ward out from BBT is going to allow them to invade the triangle nice and easy. They can look through rotations up top as well. Uh, I'm not sure if Cycle will want to necessarily go through the gate as we've seen in the last series. Certainly some potential there as well. Of course, the Battle Fury timing for Saika isn't too far now either, already having at least a Cornucopia up. And if this keeps snowballing their way, I mean... Oh. Yeah, bottom lane, Waldron Ripper dragging him back and Lelis just has no chance of survivals Toronto picking up his third kill of the game already and this is starting to look like a real kind of avalanche kind of game here John I mean it's just the perfect start for BBT and it is it's gonna take a while for now it's to kind of kick into gear here as well and you've got 
Coffee still working into the power treads. Uh, top net effort for his team, but that's not really saying much. He's at least 800 behind the next core from BBT on GPK. And this this quap with the burst huh? damage you do have with Masochus is great, but... Gunner in trouble again. The Psyche is not backing up either. He wants the kill. Hands up, and there goes Gunner. No chance surviving the Ursa having the time of his life and I mean, this is going to be a very fast battle fury at this rate for the psycho like he's he's already halfway there not gonna take too long and again that leads up to the ursa rushing his farm maybe looking for some uh movement across the map if there's an opportunity into roshan there's a lot of play coming out from bbt right before the 10 minute mark as well 7-0 camp gunner again oh oh gunner Burrow strike into the high ground. He's okay. Oh, save. Surely they know. Surely they know he's still there. And they're going to check and they're going to find him. What uh. a trap by BBT. I, I don't think the camera caught that. But there was just casually three heroes standing by the T1 tower waiting for him to TP back. Yeah, oh, they knew he was just going to head back down bot, get punished. He is buying oh. some space at the least. I, I guess that's the one silver lining that we could maybe point out. Yuma's got room to breed up top. You've got copy jungling. In, yeah. Know, how much space could you possibly provide at nine minutes in? Look, I'm Good trying nice. to find a silver lining, Mike. He doesn't have a TP, <laughs> you know, and I appreciate Gunner going for this Burr Strike uh, Sandstorm centric build, but up again, I, I suppose the melee matchup of Ursa is not the comfiest where you can leverage Stinger, and this will allow him to recover in the jungle, but uh, he's going to need to, they, they need to find space for him. He's trying to rush into the blink, at least he's a thousand gold in, so it's not too bad, but they already have this forward ward set up right between the tier 2 tier 3 on the ramp of the triangle. Uh, Saika saying sun into eyes. Oh, this, you know, sun's good for you sometimes, Saika, you know? Just... These these players, John, they see sunlight once and they, they get all upset every time. <laughs> oh, I've seen this firsthand, yeah. Uh, I, I think... Hey, well, what was it? Wait till they hear about, hear about grass, John. Dying. Mid lane, fly. <laughs> You'll be all right. Copy is there to try and help out, but Copy's pretty far behind in the net worth department. He'll be forced to blink north. And even with the spells you do have available, it, it just doesn't really feel like the Quap can get involved and set a tempo for, for her team. It does feel like now they're just stuck kind of sitting back and trying to secure some comeback farm here, but it is a very kind of secure position, I want to say, for BB team at the moment. Yeah, I, I, the big issue for now is there's no one for these supports to connect with, really. Uh, Yuma's not ready, Gunner is far from ready, of course. And these supports... Can't really do much outside of, uh, I guess, Lull is shoving away a wave with March. Doesn't even have six just yet for rearm, but is close to that point, so the stall game can come in. Unfortunately, it does look like you're going to lose all your tier one towers very early on. And I was having a conversation with, who was it? We were watching Wallachia Season 2 qualifiers with JL from Execration. And he was trying to give his post-mortem about what went wrong with her own Tinker games. If you can't hold these tier ones, Tinker doesn't really have a very safe spot. You don't want to really be holding tier twos. You want to try to keep your tier ones alive, stall the game from that point. Uh, with all these tier ones gone, Lulus is maybe not going to have the comfiest game in trying to just find some free, safe farm for himself that his team will be willing to back him up if he is committed on. It certainly does feel like a, a pretty awkward position if you are the support tinker in this kind of game, that's for sure. I mean, it's just there's going to be no space to get any kind of farm for yourself, that's for sure. And Well, here we go. Three-man smoke up from downs. They want to try something. If you could find the Ursa, that'd be an amazing kill. Speaking of that Ursa, by the way, in case uh, we didn't have the update, Saika did get his Battle Fury, so... He's kind of farmed out of control already. They are going to spot him out, though. Keep in mind, he does have Enrage available. It's not the easiest kill. They're going to try. Static Storm drop, but they do not get him in the Kinetic still. The Glimpse back is going to be there, but the Enrage was already popped, and Saika knows he can't die. That's just kind of the thing. He can't die. There goes Lelis on top. And I, I, I mean, it's wishful thinking, but even that... Even that's a bit too positive, I think, for that kind of play, John. Because yeah, yeah. where was the damage going to come from? Yeah, it's... I mean, a, a rotation from Disruptor Mid? Tinker is not amazing. Yuma? Yeah, Yuma's just... Yeah, Yuma's no. dead. All right. 
That was a, a dragon uh, talent to kisses. Uh, good, we're looking at the hell bear smash, Jonathan. That, that's something. <laughs> hey, it's important. Those creeps, you know, they, they put a lot of work in my... You know? Yeah, cameraman trying to save... Save the NA fans. We, we appreciate that, cameraman. Yes, yes. We do, no need to look, our friends from America. No need... Uh, cover your eyes, Jenkins. You know, cover your eyes Lane. and wait for the comeback. Glimpse away on GPK. He'll say thank you very much for that. So 11-0. We haven't had one of these games in quite a while, Mike. Uh, it's been so long that I actually don't know how to inhale copium right now. To be fair, uh, <laughs> Yuma can split. Uh, you know, you know, Yuma could farm with Phantasm, right? You, you hit the this. Copium, John. I, I don't know what copy is going for. I don't know if he knows either because normally you go Kaya, and I legit don't think it's gonna be enough. It feels like a lot of this game is maybe down to Gunner. He's got the blink up. He's got level one epicenter. He's got the maxed out sandstorm. There is some damage to play here. If he can front line, we'll probably need one durability item up before then. That's going to be the pipe. Still needs more time. And by that time, you're, you're going to be giving out a lot. You know, Saika took Roshan, of course, as we were talking about earlier, going for the blink into BKB. A 12k lead at 13 minutes in, 11-0. Uh, if Nowens finds the kills, that's a 100% increase for the kills. The two men's... There's a two-man smoke that Miero just casually runs into as now a Static Storm has been dropped on two, but there's no follow-up and Copy is dead. I repeat, Copy is dead. Save's alive. Save, Save is alive. Gunner is gone to boot. GPK? Hmm. Yeah, he's going to fight enough. I mean, I... 14 to 0. It's a tough game. It's a yeah. tough game. It kind of reminds me of some of those PGL Wallachio qualifiers I was watching, actually. This exact same thing happened to the Tinker Sport draft in one of the games. I don't know, there was a lot of Tinker Sport, man. One of the games went this bad. I, I think the big issue was uh, in this game, uh, the big issue is in this game, is that Gunner really didn't have a lane. Lelis was just, he died twice in lane. Gunner ends up dying like twice, three times in a row with no TP at some point. And it just becomes untenable at that point. You have a mid who needs items, who can't really connect with Disruptor Tinker in a wider fight for pickups because you didn't snowball mid either here. Um, you have a CK that also needs farm, and you have all the farm world for BBT. Like we've been talking a lot about Saika. You know, you got the Ags timing very early on from Yero. He's going for his own full pipe into the blink. He's got a lot of damage. And once the pipe's up, that's most of your damage here from now. And so you're not going physical at all. Like Yuma is not ready to apply some physical output here. So just this pipe timing from Yarrow might just keep this at zero kills for quite a while here for Nouns. Just look at the way they're, they're choking out Nouns from the map as well. Like Gunner's just trying to farm by his tier 2 tower in a, in a dire jungle camp and it's just like, no, you don't get that chance. You get no farm, sir. Back to the tier 2 tower for you. And speaking of that tier 2 tower, John, it may cease to exist in just a moment. Because BBT, they are posturing quite aggressively. In fact, mid T2 Tower is just casually being taken out by Toronto Tokyo's uh, Dark Troll Summoner. Meanwhile, top, Lelis will be able to TP away just in the nick of time. But you you now just don't protect this T2 Tower. The mid T2 Tower, I mean, uh, a soft, uh, gentle breeze would blow that over. It's just looking very, very tough here for Nouns. Props to the boys. They are trying to find some net worth here to try and give themselves a decent chance at forcing a fight. It's just not coming quick enough. It's still a, at a 14k disadvantage here for now. That it is. Uh, Toronto Tokyo is right in line with Gunner Snefford almost. Just a uh, stone throws away. 300 gold difference. There's that pipe we were talking about from Miero. So all of the magical bursts you're looking for from your Quap and from your Sand Kings uh, kind of nullify down. Uh, along with, say, this mech timing coming out for save to have some sustain on top. I'm really not sure what you do right now in now uh, i'll be frank this is uh 14 oh it's 16 minutes I, I i swear to goodness mike this is uh we have not yeah. seen this in at least two three years in our own games maybe in any deep you don't I stand corrected maybe so never mind well, why are you gonna do that john why do no, you I mean, have like, to do that yeah, like div 2 nadpc you know when when wild card would go up and down div 2 right well so now Sammy's copping shots. Well, why oh, does Sammy do, well, No, Sammy would get the 14-0. In Div 2, when they when they demoted into Div 2 sometimes. 
Well, now I know you're lying, John. Why are you saying that? We've I've seen that know. from Wild Card. You're unbelievable. Yeah. You're unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's all in the past. No one can verify this. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sam. We love you, Sam. I miss good old Sammy boy. I miss me some NA Dota, and you know, for the NA Dota fans, this is uh, this is painful. But again, there's a timing here. The Dagon's Not already for up for fans. copy. There oh, was what? that one guy. Yeah. That was a mega Artesi fan. I think PPD retweeted it, so he's probably <laughs> very happy right now. <laughs> shout out to the to anyone that knows about that situation. <laughs> I have shout no out to that guy as well. Talking, I have no. You can look it up, John. It's on Twitter. It's on X, John. Whatever it's called. I, see, it's, I, it's I can't read. Mike, you know this. I can't read. I can barely decipher what's on the game. I'm, I'm working off pure memory. You know? <laughs> so don't tell me to read something. I, I have no patience for that. As I say, as I uh, start a new manga. Still, 14 to 0, uh, 18k. I'm not going to ask. 16, I'm, I'm not going to ask. There was a really good manga. I, if I say the don't. title, though, I think it's, yeah, I'm not, not going to mention wait, wait, it. Wait, the wait. concept is really good. We're casting TI, John, for the love of God. I mean, if we have our limits to how low we go. Gunner, top player, he's getting some farm here on the Sand King. It's still a 16k deficit, though, sadly, here for Nouns. I mean, BBT are just in absolute control. BKB about to come up on Psyker. Uh, I, I mean, I know you've told me you're, you're not really sure how Nouns are going to make a comeback here, Jonathan. I, I tend to agree with you in that sentiment. Uh, as I think you bottom said. lane, looks like they have found out Yuma. Oh, cancels his TP. TP cancelled. Yeah, I mean, that, that, you know, he's going to yeah. die. He's yeah. going to die anyway. Yeah, he could have forced out a roar, you know? Maybe they didn't even need it. Who knows? Ah, uh, Toronto. You know, uh... Mid lane. Fly, destroy. Okay. Hmm. Gunner? Gunner? You want to start doing play-by-play -play too, John? <laughs> Gunner, he's caught out. I mean... And he's dead. I, <laughs> I'll be frank with you, Mike. What analysis do you want from me? It's 17 17k. <laughs> they just need one kill on nouns. They're not able to find it right now. I was about you know, to say there's nothing to play-by-play -play either. There's nothing to cast you, John. <laughs> ah. What a lovely game of Dota 2. This, this is Dota 2. This is a match that you'd go into Overwatch and you'd find it. Then you realize it's a TI replay. <laughs> Torment to be taken at the very least. Oh, Psyker's coming. Psyker is coming. It is not safe, boys. Get the hell out. Oh, Psyker. He does not steal the Tormentor at least. And he does use his BKB charge. So that's his nine second charge gone. And Fly does get a free shot. So that's a big positive. And it is. Thunder Strike to scout forward could be big. They're actually going for a smoke. They find an angle without that pipe up. This could be the fight. This could be the fight. BBT. I mean, they're waiting for it. They're ready for the fight whenever. They'll hold the high ground. GPK on the low ground, but that's not really the target you want. Like, he's a very tanky boy at the moment. GPK pops the dragon form, looking to move in. Epicenter out from Gunner. They'll try for the DK, but he's got the Mage Slayer. He's just not dropping quick enough. They'll even drop a Static Storm on top, but Gunner's gone. Yuma, he will oh. die to boot. They'll finally get GPK, but it's cost them three heroes. It's it's definitely not worth it at all. And in fact, GPK, <laughs> he'll get tipped for being the first one to die. As is tradition. Yeah. Could have had a game with no one dying on BBT's side. Gives them a kill. Big kill for now. And that one kill gave them 790 gold. Half of what BBT gets for three kills. So somewhat worthwhile. I mean, silver linings. It, it's it's their first kill. They've, they've done it. They just need to do that uh, 20 more times without dying. Yeah. This is still better than uh, Raygun's performance, by the way, at the Olympics, in case you uh, saw that, Jonathan. <laughs> You heard a ray gun? <laughs> I, 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 was, I, I was so curious when you'd actually bring that Olympic performance up. Oh, I, I've been em very embarrassed the past couple, uh, the past month, Jonathan. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up, but you know, this uh, is probably the perfect moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is... I, 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 I wouldn't disagree. I think it's still better. I think, uh, you know, now it's, uh, they had a draft idea. It's just uh, the lanes didn't go as they'd expect. With this Ursa last pick from BBT for Saika. 
worked out really damn well. The idea that Gunner had for his lane, just going for Burrow Strike Sandstorm, not going for the Stinger for a melee matchup, which is, again, understandable. There's an idea behind it that you don't really want to be within range of Saika anyhow, within range of an Ursa in a melee range matchup. But it also takes away your early presence there for Gunner. Your other lanes doesn't, don't really get that running start either. Roshan number two to be taken for free by BBT. As now it's our probably no position to come in. 20k lead, 22 minutes, 20 to 1. Another Aegis, in fact, Cycle leaves the Aegis for GPK. I thought they were just going to leave it at this point, you know? They could have. They, I mean, he, he could have just taken it, but he didn't, he didn't want to drop the one. That's all. In, in fairness, Saika just doesn't need it. They gave it to GPK because he's the only one that's actually died in this game. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> They're just trolling GPK. Uh, yeah. uh, they, they, they literally just... Just to prevent another death. You know, you don't want another increase, 100% increase here for now. It's under killboard. So GPK is covered now at the very least. Uh, do we have any major item timings here? No. Not quite yet. Yuma... Going for the Sanji Yasha. Looks like he has Echo Saber almost done. Perhaps a smoke out from BBT. And I mean, it feels like they're one or two team fights away from just clearing out high ground at this point. You do have more auras out from Nounce. You've got the full Holy Locket plus the mech ready on Lullus. So there's, there is some sustain true along with that fresh pipe on Gunner. So they can maybe sustain true some of the onslaught. Well, we'll have to see if it's enough. BBT, at least for their part, aren't finding anything with the smoke. They are playing on the right side of the map here now and it's hugging the fully controlled top area on the Radiant side. But high ground does begin in earnest now for BBT. Here we go. Can they stop the push? It's not looking good. The GPK is looking to back off. So as much as they are leading right now, BBT are certainly still paying their respect towards Nouns. It is still high ground you are attempting. They'll try again in the mid lane. Gunner going to remove himself from that scenario. In goes the Roshan banner, and that's going to make life a lot easier for the side of BBT to just get rid of these uh, this mid barracks. T3 tower almost already gone. I mean, it's Nouns that have to make the jump in. There's no two ways about it. The question is, is it even going to matter? Like, there's just a couple BKBs up now. Everyone's too tanky. It took them a very long time to even just find GPK on the DK last fight around. Nice deny oh. from Gunner. That's a win. We got it. That, very that, nice deny. That will change the course of this game. He gets it oh, again. Oh, it's a double deny. It's a double deny. It, that might be TI history. We've never seen that before. <laughs> We've also never We've done seen a 20 to 1. You know, I, I feel like that's what? that's a bigger point there, Mike, but... No, that, that is fair. I could have we have. You and I definitely have. I can guarantee... In TI? In TI? John, we're, we're the SEA casters, John. We've definitely seen those score lines. <laughs> uh, guaranteed. Yeah, we get them all. Mid lane. Smoke out here. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's really that easy, John. <laughs> the it really is that easy. It's the BKB4. <laughs> what was that, Mir? <laughs> okay. It's to send a message. He was in smoke. He couldn't even see it pop. He's sending a message, John. They'll see the <laughs> replay. Miro jumps in. Who is he roaring? Apparently nobody. Yuma. He's the one who jumped in. And he is the one just getting destroyed. Miro. I mean, he's just tanking through all the damage that the gunner's providing. Like, the Ax is just healing him up. In they go for more. GPK finds a stun onto Fly. That's Fly dead. Gunner's trying to borrow strike out. He's going to die to boot. Buyback from Fly, and the GG is caught. They've seen okay. it. I appreciate it. I mean, you know, it's... At some point, you've just got to call. This game was over the 10-minute mark. It really did feel that way. Again, the lanes here for now is just... Uh, did not work out in any feasible form. Um, Miero and Save just doing a lot of work with all of the reach they had with cookie combinations, just getting aggressive early on. Then you had Saika in his lane as well, just running down Gunner and Lullis. And I, there, there was just no recovery. It feels like this Tinker, if you lose